Hello, Algebra students. This is Mr. Bean again. We're going to have today's lesson on inequalities and specifically systems of inequalities and how we graph these types of problems. So to start off, let's figure out what in the world is an inequality when we have that word and we see that word. And inequality is when we're talking about not being equal. So for example, if we say Mr. Sullivan and Mr. Kelly, we want to compare these guys and say, OK, it would be rude if we're just talking about like what teacher you think is better. We're not going to do that. It might send somebody home crying. But what if we said something like, who has more championships through, uh, through coaching sports? Because they both are actually pretty darn good coaches. I've coached against Mr. Sullivan a bit. And I've coached with Mr. Kelly, uh, good coaches. So who has more? You know, if we said, well, maybe it's Mr. Sullivan, then we'd have to say greater than is opening up towards Mr. Sullivan. I, I don't know if that's true. You'd have to ask them, actually. I'm not sure which one has more. Or maybe we want to ask the question, who has more? <laughs> who has more hair? Well, this picture is a little bit deceiving because this is not what... Um, this is not what Mr. Kelly looks like anymore. This is a little bit old. So let's make this fair and help out. Let's see if I go like this. <laughs> um, let's fast forward this. And then there, this is a little bit more Mr. Kelly's hairdo today. So then we'd say, okay, so who has more hair, Mr. Kelly or Mr. Sullivan? So you put a greater than on whoever has more hair. Or let's compare Mr. Bean and Mr. Bust. Uh, who is more likely to scare small children on the street if you're walking by them? That would be Mr. probably Mr. Bust. Or maybe we could compare Mr. Bean and Mr. Brust, who uh, maybe works harder. We could say, well, Mr. Bean works at least as hard as Mr. Brust, so we could say greater than or equal to. He could equal Mr. Brust's work effort or more. Okay, so you get the idea. Let's do some quick, and I mean quick, really fast review. This right here, what is that thing? Y-intercept. This should be second nature to you by now. This is the slope, the rise over the run. Okay, so we're going to graph these things. Negative 4, notice these are all equal signs. 1, 2, 3, 4. There's our y-intercept. 1, 2, 3 over 1. 1, 2, 3, right 1. There is our slope. And I like to 1, 2, 3, put a, as many dots as I possibly can because that helps me make my straight line. There is our line. y-intercept, negative 4, slope of up 3 over 1. Good. This one positive one y intercept so do these fast with me as you're going negative two why well, don't i can go up or down if i go up two then i'd have to go left one up to left one or down to right one either way works because then that helps us get all the points we need to try to create a nice straight line oh a little curved but good enough uh, y equals 2. These are horizontal lines. You go up to where y equals 2. That's where y equals 2. And it's every point that has a y value of 2. So it is a straight line that's just flat horizontal. So extremely important that you know the difference between these two things. x equals negative 3. 1, 2, 3 right here. So that's a vertical line straight up and down at an x value of negative 3. OK, so quick review there. Uh, again, if you don't know that, you've got to go back through that. Ask your teacher, like, hey, I do not remember slope and y-intercept. You've got to get help on that to make sure you can cover the rest of this lesson. Here, you're going to pause this. This is very similar to our last lesson, but now we have a less than symbol, so just pay attention to that. I want you to figure out which one of these are solutions to the inequality. If you plug in the x and a y, that makes the statement true. Okay, pause now. Okay, here's the answer. These two are the only ones that will make this inequality true. You might have been tempted to circle this last one, but that is not correct because this one would actually equal. Now, if, you, if we had had a less than or equal to right there, then yes, we would have said that last one. But it does not count, so don't circle that one. Next up, we're going to graph this thing. So we have this. I wrote it back down here so you can see it. y is less than 2x minus 3. Let's graph this using two different methods. So the first thing is we need, well first let's get the line here, so y-intercept 1, 2, 3, negative 3, find a few more points, up 2 over 1, up 2, right 1, and so forth, you have a positive slope going up and up and up, it's down 1 over 1, okay. So now because it just says less than, we're going to do a dashed line, so you got to make sure that as you're graphing this, it's not completely solid, you need to make it dashed. Okay, so that might be something you include in your notes, maybe off in the margin, is just to remind yourself that if you see a less than or a greater than symbol, that that is a dashed line. But if you saw a less than or equal to, or you see a greater than or equal to, then this one's going to be a solid line. Okay, dashed line. 
Okay, so just make sure you have that if, you, if you're if you forgetting that. That's a common thing that kids forget to do. Okay, so now, how in the world do we shade? One of these two sides of the line needs to be shaded because we're saying it's more than this line or less than this line. So here's how you use a test point. It's really nice if you can use this 0, 0 as a test point. So I'm going to plug in 0, 0 to check and see if this is within the solution. So you already did this, in this in, up above, and you found out that 0 is less than, let's see here, 2 times 0 minus 3. Well, when you simplify that, you get 0, squeeze in here right on the bottom, 0 is less than negative 3. That is not true. 0 is not less than negative 3, so this is not part of the solution. So the origin right there, not part of the solution. I'm going to shade the other side because the other side of the line must be the solution. So then we just kind of shade this. Some of you are going to be really, really nice shaded. Some of you are going to be a little bit uh, sloppy like me on that one. So you just need to make sure one side of the line shaded. Okay, now there is a, this is my preference as to what I'm going to show you here. Test points will always work. Uh, I kind of like this method, and that is if you see uh, something like this, if you see y is greater than blah, 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 that means you shade above the line. You just take the line and you go straight above it. If you see y is less than blah, 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 so if y is all by itself, then you shade below the line when it says less than. Let's show you what I mean. Let's graph this line again real quick. Okay, there's my line. Not quite straight like I'd like it to be. And then we're going to shade, what was it? Right here. y is less than 2x minus 3. Because it says less than, you shade straight below the line. So you just put your pencil on the line and you go straight down. Anywhere, straight down. That's how you know. It's below it. Okay, you get the same exact answer as we did before with the test point. But I kind of like this because there's not a whole bunch of, of computations I have to do. I just look at the symbol and I'm good to go. But let me remind you, that only works when y is isolated. It has to be all by itself for that strategy to work. Okay, before we go on, I want to show you this website called Desmos. Desmos.com, and then I've got here forward slash calculator. If you go to Desmos, you've got these nice graphing calculators we can use. And I have created a little graph here. It's the exact graph that I just had where the slope is a 2 and the y-intercept is a negative 3. Now, here's what's kind of cool. If I take the y-intercept and I shift it, I can shift it up. It looks like this graph's moving left. It's actually moving up. So here the y-intercept is 2, y-intercept is 3, y-intercept is 4. So uh, I can kind of move the y-intercept around. But watch what happens when I do the slope. The slope, where is the shaded region? The shaded region is below it. Why? Because of this right here because that is a less than. So if it says less than, we're going to shade below the line. It doesn't matter how steep that slope is. Look at that really steep slope. It's still below the line. So if I change that to a greater than, let's change that greater than, then you get it's above the line. Okay? So this is a really cool thing you can use at home, desmos.com. If you're ever having to graph things uh, and you don't have a graphing calculator handy, this is kind of cool, nice thing to use. All right, next up is example number seven. We're going to graph in standard form. So we could do this one of two ways. You could just come up with an x, y, t chart like we did in our last lesson. So if I just said x is a zero, what would y have to be? A three. Because if we plugged in a zero, you get a negative three. That would work. What if y was a zero? If I said y is a zero, I would, this x would have to be, it would also have to be a three. Oh, that's cool. So then I go zero, three, one, two, three, dot, one, two, three, zero. There's my two dots. And now you can kind of connect it. Uh, another way of doing this, which I kind of like, and I, you need to make sure you practice this as well, that is, let's just solve for y. Get y by itself. Uh, then we don't have to necessarily do a test point either, but, we, well, we could. You know what? Let's just show you real quick. Is this solid or dashed? Solid line. So we got a solid line that is hopefully straight. Oh, that was good. I'm proud of that straight line. So kind of a straight line. And then test point. If I plug in a test point of 0, comma 0, I would end up with 0 is less than or equal to negative 3. Is that true? No, it is not true. So that means the origin right there, 0, 0, is not part of the solution. So the other side of the line is the solution. So we shade that side. Okay, now let me show you this one thing. Extremely important here. We're done with this problem. It's already finished. But uh, let's solve for y. If I add x to both sides, plus x, plus x. 
then I will get on the left side negative y. Do not forget the negative there. It's still there. Negative y is less than or equal to, let's say, x minus 3. I have a positive x on the right side. Now the last thing here before y is by itself is I need to divide by negative 1, divide by negative 1, divide by negative 1. When you divide, it's kind of like a distributing thing. You have to distribute to the whole thing. So then we go y is, now here's the key. When you divide by a negative, you must flip the inequality. That inequality symbol has to change directions when you divide by a negative. Hopefully that is a little bit familiar for you, that you've seen that before. So now we have a negative x and a plus 3. So let's, let's apply this to the graph up here and see if it works. Y-intercept of 3, check, that worked. Slope is negative 1, so we go down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1, check, that worked, nice. What about the greater than? You shade, this is above. Y is bigger than the line, so you shade above it. And ha, right, it worked. See, same idea. So you can use either method. This is Mr. Bean's preferred method because I just it, I think it's easier and faster than trying to come up with a t-chart, but uh, whichever way works for you. Now we're into some tricky stuff with a system of inequalities. When you have more than one inequality, we call it a system. So we're going to combine the last two problems that we just did. So you can see here, uh, these two are the two inequalities that you just worked on graphing, and we're going to graph them together uh, to figure out what the solution set looks like. So a visual representation, or in other words, just the graph. So let's, uh, I'm going to put this first graph on real quick. So I'll speed up as I'm graphing this. Up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, then down 2 left 1. This is uh, less than, so it's got to be dashed, dashed, dashed. Okay, so don't make it solid, and okay. Good. Okay, now we have our line. So the next thing we need to do is figure out what side to shade on, since it says y is less than. I am going to lightly, with your pencil, very lightly, underneath it, we're going to put some little marks straight down because it says less than, so I know what's underneath this line. And I'm just going to make little marks here to remind myself which side of the line I'm shading on. Okay, you'll see how that works for us in just a second. Now let's go to the other line uh, and graph this if I remember. What was this one? It is y is greater than or equal to negative x plus 3. All right, that's from our last problem. Okay, so now I graph that one. Let's speed up again. Right intercept of three, negative slope, and this is a solid line, so it has a negative one slope, down one over one, down one over one, and there we go. Okay, now which side? It says greater than or equal to. So greater than means straight above the line. So I put my pencil on the line, and I'm gonna lightly, lightly make some marks, because I'm gonna get rid of some of these marks, above the line. And now all we have to do is we really, our answer is where they overlap. And this right here is where they overlap. All right, so that's what we shade in really dark. This, these other lines are not supposed to be there, so you did it lightly in a pencil so that we can get rid of them. Whoop. So you just do it really, really light, and then that's actually not part of the solution, so we need to kind of get rid of them. This is the only solution right there. You have a dashed line, solid line, and it's the overlapping. So this is kind of cool because it's really hard. Can, uh, remember last unit where Mr. Sullivan was uh, talking about solution sets and we'd have these kind of weird brackets and you talk about uh, how what the values of x are and all these different numbers? That would be really hard to describe all of these numbers in a, with a solution set notation. So the graph makes it really nice and easy to visually look and see, okay, any point that we could come up with in this shaded region is part of the solution set. All right, we're going to do one more problem, and we're going to end with this one. The only thing I want to do, you'll, you'll pause here in a minute and do it on your own, but I want to encourage you when you have ones like this, 2x minus y is greater than or equal to 2, we're going to rewrite both of them. x minus 2y is greater than or equal to negative 2, and we're going to solve for y. If we can do that first before we start graphing, it might help us out a little bit. I'll do the first solving with you, so I'll subtract 2x from both sides. Gives me negative y greater than or equal to negative 2x plus 2. Divide everything by negative 1. And when you do that, you have to flip the inequality. Remember here, I'm dividing by a negative, dividing by a negative, dividing everything by a negative. So now I have y is, flip it, less than or equal to 2x minus 2. Okay, do the same thing with this, solve for y, and then you're going to graph these two things 
So pause now, and when you're done, continue the video and uh, we'll see how you did. And your answer should look something like this. Note, recognize they're both solid, uh, not dashed. And they are both below the line. So I had to shade underneath this one and underneath this one. So you go straight down. Remember, you're not thinking left or right. You're just thinking above or below. So this would be just your solution. Hey, that is it. We finished. Nice job. Good luck on the mastery check for this lesson, and I will see you back for a few more before this unit's over.